everyone. It's Hannah. Today I am here with Thane Jasperson, Broadway star. Um, he's here doing a class at the Green River High School. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you've done? Yeah, so, um, so I'm from the original cast of Hamilton uh, on Broadway. I started with the show seven years ago. We did a workshop January 2014, and then um, we continued on to another workshop in 2014, and then I continued with Off-Broadway into Broadway. I play Samuel Seabury, so I sing a little bit of Heed not the rabble who scream revolution. You know, it's Basically, he got insulted by Lin Manuel Miranda every night for years. Every night. It's which just is amazing. Terrible torture. <laughs> <I> know, right? <laughs> but it's Lin, so it's okay. You know what I mean? It's, it's okay, exactly. I <laughs> let him insult me every night. It's fine. Totally. Bring it, bring it, Lin. You know, it's pretty great. It's, it's been crazy. We, um, I got to play the role. I remember I went in for the show. Um, I was in Matilda at the time on Broadway, and uh, I casting came to me and said, hey, there's a new show about Hamilton, told through rap and hip-hop, what do you think, want to audition for it? And I was like, weird. But then I heard it was <laughs> Lin-Manuel Miranda, and I was like, in heights, yes, give me that. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn um, Dear Theodosia and Washington on Your Side. Uh, I had to do the rap that Mulligan he goes, he's double the size of the government, wasn't the trouble with my previous government side. That's one of the hardest drafts. <laughs> like, I, I can't do that one. I know. <laughs> it is crazy, it is crazy. I definitely, I feel like even now as I do it, I get kind of tongue-tied, but um, super cool. And then they just said, he needs to be Samuel Seabury. And then I've been mm -hmm. him ever since, and I've stayed with the show. I haven't been able to leave because it's so good. I, I, don't, I don't know how to leave, so I'm still there. I'm the right. last OG. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Love that. So cool. It's been pretty cool. Um, so can you explain your connection with the West? You grew up in Utah, right? But what's your connection to like this area in Utah and Wyoming? Yeah, so Green River is where I started my life. So, I mean, pretty much, well, technically, I guess I was born in Utah. And then a couple months after, moved to Green River, which is where my family, the Jasperson side, is all mm -hmm. from. So I grew up in Green River until I was about six or seven, then moved to Evanston, Wyoming, and then moved to Utah for high school. And uh, yeah, then I and then I've been one day I wanted to go to New York. I decided, you know, after it was actually after I did so you think you can dance that I decided I thought, wait, I can I can hang with the kids in New York because I was kind of scared growing up yeah. in a small town. And so I went to New York and I got a one way ticket and then I got into the West Side Story tour, mm -hmm. which was really cool. And then I was in the original cast of Newsies and that was my Broadway debut. And then I went out to Matilda and Finding Neverland and. Just kind of like dreams came true, but really, I was excited to come out here and teach and work in Green River because my family's here. It's where my the base of my life starts, my existence. So you know, I feel excited and proud about the people who are here and the artists here, and I want to help them to push them forward. Be like, you can do it. I did it. You can do it. Yeah, yeah. So you're doing these classes. So what's kind of the main point of the classes, and like, what are you teaching the kids, and why did you, yeah, want to do this for the kids here specifically? I know it's kind of it's kind of random when you think about it, right? <laughs> but it was actually really cool. So um, the drama department, the Skinners, both they had kind of s expressed interest in having me come out to work with the theater department and uh, here at Green River High School. And so and I jumped at the opportunity because I was like, yes, I want to come back to my roots. And <laughs> so uh, we just started in talks, and they left it open to just say it's class with Thane, who's from Hamilton, he's from Newsies, he's Matilda, he's done Broadway, he's coming in to do class. So just come in and. <laughs> Be whatever. So yeah. it's kind of nice because it left it open for me to do whatever felt right. And so we did, of course, we had to do Hamilton because the kids, you know, nowadays are like really excited. Well, yeah, with it just coming out on Disney Plus, yes. like even more so. I know, right? Yeah. Which was incredible to have that come out during, especially this time when people needed theater. And, and so then to have it come out on Disney Plus was a really cool thing. And as I watch myself, I'm always like, Bane, stop touching your hair because I'm always <laughs> fixing my hair. I can't help it. And <laughs> And, but then it's it's also fun to see yourself and to see your the original castmates who we all were family. So, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah. So then while I've been out here, we've done some Hamilton things. We danced. We sang. We beatboxed. We rapped. We did all kinds of things, um, mm -hmm. which was really fun. And, and it was awesome to watch them grow and to gain confidence in themselves throughout just two days. Yeah. So have you done classes like this before, or is this just a totally new thing that you're like, why not? <laughs> um, I do love to teach. I. Thankfully, aside from performing, I love to perform and to do it all, but then I also love to teach, I love to choreograph. Um, I've been loving getting more into piano and trying to get better at piano and singing, so today I got to play a little for them and have them sing, and that was fun. So I, yeah, I've always been, a teacher has always been something like, since I started performing, I also taught right away. So I think it's just something that I naturally love and want to continue to do. Yeah, that's great. 
That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so how would you describe, like, growing up in the West, you talked about this a little bit, and then moving to New York, New York like, what's the difference in just kind of the arts in the West and in New a place like New York? Like, obviously there's a difference, but what was that like for you? Well, one thing, you know, I was actually surprised to see how huge the theater department is here in Green River High School. I was really excited about that. Um, they were showing me around, and I thought, whoa, this is, if only I had this growing up, and if only I had the gumption and the confidence, I would have loved to be involved in things like this. And, uh, but also, you know, and it's cool because they really want to cultivate deep works of art and things, you know, we were talking, Mr. Skinner, who runs the department here, we were talking last night about different works that he wants to do, and he's talking, you know, Dead Poet Society and deeper works as well as... You know, because the, the fun things, the fun shows are also great, and the fluffy yeah. fun shows that are happy are, are wonderful, and I love those. But also it's cool that he wants to dive into all the aspects of the arts, so that I was really impressed with. Um, but of course, you know, out in New York, you go out there, and it's everybody's been training, so yeah. you're up against auditioning against the best people who all want to do Broadway, and it's tight, and it's hard, so mm -hmm. you, you go in for things where you feel really right for them, but then you, know, you don't always get them, so I feel like... Rejection is the biggest part of the game. Really, like, I've had a million people always like, you've done everything. I'm like, no, no, you guys have had so many rejections. You know, yeah. I have to be like, you have to remember, like, you'll go in for a million things that you don't get, things you feel right for, and it just doesn't happen. So uh, I was really scared to go out to New York, but once I got there, I remember just feeling the way that, like, my body was just saying, yes, this is where you need to be, this is it. Mm -hmm. And I got my one-way ticket to New York, I set my bags down, I said, I'm going to get a job, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what would you say to encourage like kids that are into theater, that are from the West, that maybe feel like they don't have as many opportunities or that it's even like looked down on because I feel like there is part of that out here too. So what would you say to encourage them to like keep going and to get to that point? Yeah, well that's the struggle, right? I grew up, I mean when I was in Evanston, so many of mainly the boys, some girls, they, you know, I got so much crap for saying, oh this is for girls, you can't dance, you can't sing, what are you doing? And, and you know, there was this whole affiliation to it being a negative thing, and, and I regret so bad that I ever cared and listened. I remember actually the moment, because I started clogging when I was younger, and I was doing piano. Oh, yeah. I know, so great. I loved it. I clogged everywhere. I had like fringe as a Wyoming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had red sequins and a safety pin down my pants, <laughs> um, my white pants. It was great. And then uh, I, I was loving it, and I remember we had these pen pals, and there was a pen pal I had, I think they were in either Minnesota, Wisconsin, something like that. And I remember we wrote, we sent a video of us doing talents, and I wanted to clock, so I clocked. And she wrote back, and she was like, what are you doing? You can't dance with the girls. Oh, no. Killed my heart. Oh, and I was no. like, oh. And I wish so bad I just would have been like, I don't care. Bye. Bye, Bye girl. Right. You know? <laughs> but that's hard to do, especially when you're young. It's so hard. It is very hard. And I remember I was shattered, and then I was, I became very, and suddenly I started covering myself and being, okay, i got to be you know, like the normal boys. i got to be like this. This is what they do. Don't do that, you know. And and finally, it wasn't until after high school that I decided, what am I doing? I am a performer. I'm meant to do the arts. I gotta do the arts. So I started diving in. No more cares of what people thought. Although even then, after that, my my parents, you know, they would always say to me, you can't do this. this is a real job. You need a real job. And I was like, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna perform. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I don't think they believed me until they saw me on So You Can Dance or High School Musical that they were yeah. like, he's got it. He's doing it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome that you kept going and yeah. like, ultimately didn't listen to them even exactly. if it was hard. Yeah. Yeah. So it's now, so now I'm always, anytime I teach or work with young artists, I'm always trying to inspire to say, do what you love to do. Don't, do not let people tell you what is cool and mm -hmm. be boxed in. Like be the authentic version of you that you can be and grow because these are there for a reason. Your talents are there for a reason. So that's what I would say. Be unafraid. You know, I was talking to the class just recently and I was, I was saying one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten was to be unafraid to be a beginner, you know, because mm, I yeah. think we worry about being perfect and looking perfect and we have to be unafraid to look foolish and fall. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's important. Yeah. So obviously this year has been insane. <laughs> and so what's it been like for you, like going through the pandemic? What have you been doing to stay sane? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stay sane. <laughs> Try to. <laughs> all right. All right. I've been in Thane, totally in Thane, um, you know, Thane Jasperson. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, you know, it's crazy because when it first hit, 
I was getting ready for Hamilton. I was getting ready for my day. I was about to bike down to work. And then I got an email. I think it was an email. Was like, don't come into work today. We're not doing the show because of COVID. And I was like, yeah, no show. Yeah, you know? a break. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was stoked at yeah. first. So, um, you know, thinking it would be the weekend or a week. And I was really excited, and I was like, cool, well, let's hang out. Um, what am I going to do, friends? And, it's, you know, and then as time went on, I was like, oh, this is, wait a second, this is real. Yeah. So um, it, you know, it's been actually for me, I won't lie, there have been a lot of beautiful things about it mm -hmm. that I've found. Um, I've been able to reconnect with family, and I never, because when you're in New York, I would see my family once a year. Right. And so I've loved this reconnection and being able to come to Wyoming where my grandma and my mm -hmm. aunts and uncles live and cousins, and I never get to see them. So... I've been able to be out here now multiple times and to visit family, to be in nature, because New York, as you know, is like cement. It's yeah. just <laughs> cement and horns and ambulances and the street. Outside of my apartment, is always like, you stupid mother, get the, I'm a, you, I'm a, did. It's just like yelling and swearing. I'm like, can we take the fight inside? Take it inside. <laughs> You yeah, know, very different than my own. Very different. You can just go out in the wilderness. Yeah. And the beauty <laughs> and the river, the Green River. I know, so I loved the connection to nature, the reconnection to family. I loved it. And I loved it. It's made me practice piano more, and I'm really trying to get better at playing and singing together. So I'm like, okay, Thane, hone your skills. Let's work on your skills. Mm -hmm. So that's been a really cool thing. I've been able to do choreography, a ton of choreography and teaching like this, and I feel very inspired to get to work with the young artists because a lot of them do feel a little downtrodden. So I love to be able to come in and be like, you guys, it's going to resume. We're going to get back. It's going to be great. It's just a different time now. So while we're here, let's learn and grow. And I love seeing the change that is in them from the beginning and to where they are at the end. And, the, and that is really cool for me. So I do love being able to teach and do that. Yeah, that's an awesome perspective and way to find the good in the craziness. Yeah, yeah. But I've been doing like Zoom, like you'll do a bunch of concerts online or, oh, okay. you know, just, which has also been fun. I've sung way more in concerts than I would have done outside of Hamilton. Because usually I'm like, my voice is tired, I'm tired again. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, but now that I'm like not singing the show, I'm like, oh, you want me to sing? Right, bye. You know? <laughs> right. And so I'll do online uh, different concerts or things. And uh, I was actually able to do an in-person concert recently over Valentine's weekend. I'm very spaced. I was like 20 feet away from the humans. And mm -hmm. so everybody's spaced out. And uh, I was able to play and sing a bunch of songs, and that was, that was really fun. That's great. I was like, audiences, ooh, right. <laughs> this is different. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. So obviously the pandemic has been hard on things like theater and the arts especially. Yeah. Um, so what do you think, like, it's taught us about why the arts are important, like why not having them shows us why we need them? It is, you know, it is crazy and not crazy, but really inspiring to learn what humans are feeling when they get invested in the arts, in song, the way that rhythm and moves people and changes a mood so quickly. Um, dance, right? People who even feel unafraid to dance, but as soon as they kind of start to move, their, their body just feels a joy. And, it's, and being able to do and express and to dive into storytelling and, and culture and, and history is really incredible and across the world you see how it changes people how it brings a different kind of mood and vibe and energy that if more people could get into it i think they would be happier especially even during this time because yeah. people get stuck in this place of nothing's happening nothing's bringing me joy but a lot of times us as artists being able to dive into these things is bringing that and so it's so important through life it really is i mean i i don't know i don't know how to express it more than if just to say, like, come see the things, you know, mm -hmm. come join the classes, come watch a concert, uh, listen to the music and see how you feel and recognize how that is necessary for all of us. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much yeah. for taking the time. Thanks for having me. I love getting to talk to you. And I thought you wanted to ask about Jeremy Jordan and music. Well, I do, but I don't want to take all your time. Jeremy? Are you Broadway listening? <laughs> Such a Broadway nerd. This guy's worked with some of my top favorite Broadway people ever, especially Lynn and Jeremy. But, I know, they're yeah. two, two incredible people, and I see why. I right. mean, I also watch them, and I was like, so talented. So, yeah, I could geek out with you all day, but I'm not going to take all your time. Oh, I love that you had me. Thank you for yeah. taking the time. Yeah, and he's doing one more class after this, so we're going to have pictures and a story and everything in the newspaper and this on our YouTube, so... And yeah. hopefully I'll return. So come, Wyoming Heights. Yes. I want to work with Wyoming. More often. Let's yes, do it. Yes, more often. <laughs> be awesome. Yeah. Right, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks.